Welcome to the Sand to Pearls Stock Market Commentary video, your weekly window on stock market technical conditions, featuring the proprietary bull bear point and figure market breadth summary chart for June 11, 2017. Market breadth. With this past week's market decline, our bull bear point and figure ratio at 1.27 fell from 1.41 last week remaining within bullish territory. The total count of securities in bullish or bearish patterns decreased fractionally to 3,083. The count of bearish stocks increased 6%, while the count of stocks in bullish patterns decreased 5%. The Santu Pearls PNF Market Breadth Summary Chart shows us a market now three weeks in bullish territory. Paid subscribers have access to the open office calc data from which the chart is generated. You may become a paid subscriber by visiting s2pmarketsignal.com, clicking Membership, clicking Register, and following the prompts. To receive the Santu Pearl Stock Market Commentary via email free of charge, simply enter your email address in the space provided and click Subscribe. The well-known market breadth indicator the NASDAQ McClellan Summation Index rose 41 points for the fifth advance in seven weeks. At a positive 159.71 points, it continues below all six tops above plus 100, and it continues above all five bottoms below minus 100 in the last three years. Volume Analysis In this week's Volume Analysis, the NASDAQ Composite Index ended in distribution mode, with average daily volume higher than the prior week. In the last two weeks, the NASDAQ had one accumulation day and four distribution days. Accumulation days are counted when the index closes up on higher volume than the prior market day, while distribution days occur when the index closes down on volume higher than the prior market day. Last week, the NASDAQ ended in neither accumulation nor distribution mode on higher average daily volume. Momentum, now at a positive 41.06, down from a positive 196.40 last week and dropping below plus 100 at Friday 6-9 close. The CCI 20 daily in a Woody's CCI 20 uptrend Zero line reject long trade simulation ends at Monday 612 open. At Friday 519 close after two days below zero, it formed a valid zero line reject long entry signal for Monday 522 open. We will report the result of this trade simulation in next week's commentary. In Woody's CCI trading system, Six consecutive bars above or below zero are required for a change of trend. The weekly CCI 20 of the NASDAQ Composite Index began a Woody's uptrend 58 weeks ago, while the daily CCI 20 began a Woody's uptrend 29 weeks ago. The CCI 20 weekly has fallen to 135.40 from 175.91 last week. We await the return of the CCI 20 weekly to the plus or minus 50 range for another potential simulated trade. Industry rotation the last two weeks. All of the top five industries are positive and all of the bottom five are negative. Summary, brokers, banks, and some tech on top oil services, retail, and some tech on the bottom. Bullish Networkers continues in the top five. KBW Bank has left the bottom five. Brokers and KBW Bank have entered the top five. Oil services continues in the bottom five. Bearish semis and disk drives have left the top five. Oil and gold and silver have left the bottom five. CompTech, Disk Drives, and S&P Retail have entered the bottom five. 
focus this week from www.actingman.com. The three-headed debt monster that's going to ravage the economy by M. N. Gordon. The following are some key points and charts. If you recall, the Federal Reserve's quantitative easing program concluded in late 2014. The Fed even says it plans to start shrinking its balance sheet later this year. So if the Fed's not the source of liquidity for Treasury purchases, who is? Certainly the People's Bank of China and the Bank of Japan are popular Treasury buyers. In fact, after selling part of its massive hoard of Treasuries in 2016, the People's Banks of China is once again buying. In addition to the Bank of Japan's Treasury holdings, regional Japanese banks have been stocking up on Treasuries. Over the last five years, they've increased their holdings of U.S. Treasuries and other foreign bonds by 80 percent. At the moment, mass infusions of new credit are also being injected from Europe. Specifically, Treasury purchases are being prompted by the European Central Bank's never-ending quantitative easing program. The problem, of course, is that U.S. consumer debt has gone parabolic since early 2009. Student loans, auto loans, and credit card debt has all recklessly piled up to dizzying heights. In reality, U.S. consumers have borrowed much more, nearly $13 trillion, than they can ever pay back. Stagnating wages also exacerbate the problem. Matt Scully at Bloomberg clarifies the dilemma. Quote, Americans faced with lackluster income growth have been financing more of their spending with debt instead. There are early signs that loan burdens are growing unsustainably large for borrowers with lower incomes. Household borrowings have surged to a record 12 Point seven three trillion dollars and the percentage of debt that is overdue has risen for two consecutive quarters. Some companies are growing worried about their customers. Public Storage said in April that more of its self-storage customers now seem to be under stress. Credit card lenders including Synchrony Financial and Capital One Financial Corp are setting aside more money to cover bad loans. Indeed, they'll need plenty of money set aside to cover unpaid debt. You just wait and see. Total household debt, including mortgages, at a new all-time high as of the end of Q1 2017. The three-headed debt monster that's going to ravage the economy. Obviously, bad debt doesn't just go away. Over time, it metastasizes through the financial system like a wicked three-headed monster. At first, it is subtle and no one really notices the hideous growth taking place. But then, in the blink of an eye, the monster rampages through the economy, leaving destruction in its wake. The three heads of the consumer debt monster consist of student loans, auto loans, and credit card debt. What makes these debts particularly nasty is that there's no collateral backing them. Where's the collateral? The collateral for student loans is non-recoverable, for it has been dispersed into oversized professor salaries, oversized lecture auditoriums, and oversized sports complexes. Similarly, credit card debt has been run up purchasing 72-inch flat-screen televisions, avocado toast, and combination dinner platters at Applebee's. How does a creditor recover the cost of a meal that was consumed two years ago? Technically, auto loans have some form of collateral. The cars can always be repossessed. But new cars lose value nearly as fast as fresh tomatoes turn to rot. Presently, recorded levels of auto loans are backed by cars with negative equity, 
the debt owed is more than the cars are worth. The post-crisis car lending lunacy in all its awe-inspiring splendor. You may click to enlarge. What's more, easy lending over the past eight years has compelled more and more car buyers to roll their negative equity from prior loan balances into new loans. On top of that, some amiable lenders only verified income on 8% of their auto loans. Why bother with such inconveniences when the bad loans are being securitized in packaged debt offerings and sold to pension funds? The point is, this three-headed debt monster's been constructed in earnest over the last eight years. Cheap credit, zealous creditors, and money-pinched consumers desperate to maintain their standard of living have built it up with reckless abandon. Of course, the chief architects, the policymakers, particularly Bernanke and Yellen, provided the blueprint. Remember, the almighty American consumer was to borrow all the cheap credit being sprinkled about and spend the economy back to optimal growth. Well, the consumers did their part, yet the lame economic theories fell flat. Who would you like to feed to the three-headed monster for breakfast? Thank you for watching this week's Sand to Pearls Stock market video featuring the proprietary bull bear point and figure market breadth summary chart compiled by Donald Pearl www.s2pmarketsignal.com hoping that you are enjoying a peaceful and pleasant weekend that you are looking forward to a prosperous and productive week coming up and wishing you true success